There should be three distinct layers in the shop. Oh, This next series of videos are going to be on inheritance and selection. Inheritance being the way that genes are passed down from parents to child, and selection being the way that we evolve and species are formed. And I'll start off by listing off some definitions. First of all, dominant allele. Dominant alleles are alleles that are always expressed in the phenotype. Um, a prime example of this is brown hair over blue hair, usually shown as Big B for brown hair, little B for blonde hair. This can also be for blue eyes and brown eyes, it works the same way with the same letters. Dominant recessive alleles are the opposite of dominant allele. If there is no dominant allele, they will be expressed. So the genotype of a person with blue hair, not blue hair, blonde hair, B, little B, little B. There's no big B to stop the recessive allele being shown. Thirdly, codominance. Codominance is when both alleles are dominant and are both shown if they are both present. Um, an example used in the textbook for this is the colour of snapdragons. You can get red snapdragons, or you can get white snapdragons. However, um, these are shown by genes CR for red, so CRCR would give a red flower, CWCW would give a white flower. However, if both if there are CRCW present, you get a pink flower, which I'll just scribble over the red one because I'm lazy. Um, this brings another example of codominance is A and B blood groups. So in blood you get A blood group, B blood group, AB blood group, and you get an O blood group. Now O is a recessive allele, so A and B are dominant to it. However, A and B are co-dominant, which is where the AB comes into it. However, because the O is there, this becomes a multiple allele thing. Multiple allele system, which is when there are more than two alleles present for a single gene. I've already referred to these two terms previously in the video. Um, the first of which is genotype, which is the genetic makeup of a person. For example, the genotype of someone with brown hair would be big B, big B or Big B, Little B, both would display brown hair, which is the phenotype, which is brown hair. So the phenotype is the characteristic, characteristic, characteristics shown in an organism. Lastly, heterozygous and homozygous. Heterozygous refers to um, a genotype which contains the two, two different alleles. For example, brown hair heterozygous for brown hair would be Big B, little B, because Big B is expressed, and there are two different, two different alleles shown. This is where the hetero comes in. Hetero meaning different, and so logically, homozygous means it has the same. For example, Big B, Big B would give brown hair or brown eyes if you're referring to it, and A A would give A blood group, B B would give B blood group, and so on and so forth. The questions on monohybrid inheritance are fairly formulaic, monohybrid inheritance being the inheritance of one single gene. Um, this I've lifted from the book, it's the monohybrid inheritance of green pods and yellow pods. Capital G is dominant, little g is recessive. This is always the case, the bigger letters are dominant, little letters are recessive. Um, the way these questions work is they apply a letter to the alleles you give you the phenotype and the genotype. So right here we've got green pod and it's homozygous for dominant and yellow pod homozygous recessive. So next stage of this is you need to state what gametes are formed and this will be big G and big G. You need to do it for the same little g little g. Next stage is to put the gametes into a Punnett square to work out the offspring's genotypes, which is... So we'll put in G, big G, big G, and little g, little g. So green, yellow. So the offspring we'll get are all big G, little g. So the genotypes formed are big G, little g. 
and the phenotypes formed are all not H. They're all green, green pods. Homozygous, no heterozygous. The next part of this topic is sex-linked inheritance. Here you see an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. One thing you might notice is they're very, very different, which means the mono that you cannot do the monohybrid inheritance thing from them because there are no homologous pairs, apart from a little bit, which helps it in prophase. So what happens if there's a recessive allele on the X chromosome in a male, because there's no dominant allele on the X chromosome to counteract it? It means that the males display the recessive trait by only having one of the alleles. A prime example of sex-linked inheritance is haemophilia. Haemophilia is a recessive allele that causes blood to not clot when you cut, so people can bleed to death from this disease. So XH is an X chromosome which is does not carry the gene for haemophilia, and X little h does contain the gene for haemophilia. On the Y chromosome there is no homologous pair for this because it's sex linked. So if a carrier female, XH, X big H, X little h, mates with a, with a non with a male carrying none of these, the outcome is as follows, you get XH, XH, so this is a, a female who is not a carrier, XH, and XY, not XY, that doesn't make any sense, XHY, which is a male who does not show haemophilia, and XH, X little h, which is a female carrier, it's recessive so she doesn't show any of the characteristics, and X little h, Y. Because the Y chromosome does not contain the dominant gene or any other gene, and the other gene contains the X chromosome contains the the recessive allele for haemophilia, this male will show symptoms of haemophilia. For this reason, haemophilia is only found is really only found in males. There are known cases of females getting haemophilia, but it is extremely rare for the reason that they can more, they're more likely to be carriers than to have XH, XH, little H I should say.